بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه أما بعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء وتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار يا عباد الله Alhamdulillah ala ni'mat al-Islam wa sunnah All praise and thanks belong to Allah For guiding us to Islam And for guiding us to the sunnah We continue going over the tremendous book By the Fadilat al-Shaykh Al-Allama Imam bin Baz Rahimahullahu ta'ala That book which is entitled Durus al-Muhamma li'amat al-Ummah That book that is entitled Important Lessons for the general masses of the Ummah. We have reached the statement of the Imam, Imam bin Baz, rahmatullah alayhi, when speaking about major shirk, he says, rahmatullah alayhi, وَمِنْ أَنْوَاعِهِ meaning, مِنْ أَنْوَاعِ الشِّرْك and here, particularly, we're speaking about shirk al-akbar, major shirk. The shaykh, he mentions, and before going further, this is good that examples are given. And this is from the methodology of the Prophet wasallam. that when he taught, he gave examples and he brought details. Likewise, you find Ahl sunnah and following the Prophet wasallam. When they teach, they bring details and give examples. So the shaykh, he points out, he's going to point out some of the categories of major shirk. And it should be noted that he's pointing these things out as to draw your attention to them. But it is not restricted. So these are just examples. He's citing these as examples but it's not to be restricted to just what he is going to mention. But rather, there are other categories of major shirk as well. But he's going to just mention some, so as to bring example to the overall discussion. So the shaykh, he mentions, he says, وَمِنْ أَنْوَاعِهِ أَيْ شِرْكِ الْأَكْبَرِ أَيْ الشِرْك دُعَاءُ دعاء الْأَمْوَاتِ والأصنام is to make dua, is to supplicate, is to supplicate to the dead, and it's a supplicate to the statues. Naam. And this is shirk bila shak wa bila raib. Because dua, supplication, supplication is worship. Naam. Sheikh Abdul Razak bin Sheikh Abdul Muhsin al Abad al Badr, Hafidhahumullahu ta'ala, he mentions, he says, Li anna dua. Ibadatun. He says because dua is ibadah. Bal hiya a'adham al-ibadah. But rather, it is the greatest of ibadah. The, yani from the greatest types and forms of ibadah. Wa ahamuha and the most important of ibadah. Kama sahha bithalika al-hadith 
عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال just as it has been authentically reported upon the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم inside of a hadith where he صلى الله عليه وسلم he said الدعاء هو العبادة that dua verily it is ibadah that dua verily it is ibadah naam thumma tala alayhi salatu was salam qawl allah tabarak wa ta'ala wa qala rabbukum ud'uni astajib lakum inna alladhina yastakbiruna an ibadati sayadkhulun sayadkhulun jahannam dakhilin In this ayah, the ayah can be found in Surah Az-Zumar, verse number 60. Naam, ala kulli hal. It comes in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he outlined and showed us that dua, it is ibadah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, at dua huwa al-ibadah. That dua, supplication, then verily it is worship. Supplication, then verily it is worship. And then he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he recited Allah's statement. What translated means. And your Lord said, call upon me and I will answer you. Verily, those who arrogantly turn away from my worship, then they shall enter into Jahannam. They shall enter into hell disgraced. They shall enter into hell in a state of humiliation. Naam. And this is what is meant by Dakhirin. Ain't Haqirin. The Lilin. That they will enter into the hellfire humiliated, disgraced. Naam. And the like. Fasamma mustakbira an du'aihi mustakbiran an ibadatihi. And this is the point. This is the shahid here. This is the point of reference inside of the ayah. Is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he named the one who was who arrogantly turned away from his worship. He named them as, an, excuse me, he named the one who arrogantly turned away from his supplication as one who arrogantly turns away from his worship. Naam. So again, he named the one who arrogantly turned away from his supplication as one who arrogantly turns away from his worship. Naam. So here is a clear proof and indication that dua is ibadah. Naam. And from the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Naam. We have the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that at dua hu al ibadah. That dua it is ibadah. Supplication it is worship. Naam. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said a supplication it is worship. And then he recited Allah's statement. Naam. What means and, and and your Lord said call upon me and I will answer you. And verily, those who arrogantly turn away from my worship, then they shall enter into Jahannam in a state of humiliation, humiliated, disgraced. Naam. So it's clear that dua, it is ibadah. Dua, supplication, it is worship. Naam. So to give anything from dua, which is worship, to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this is the very definition of shirk. This is the very definition of shirk itself. Naam. And it's important that we, we know this and that we understand this and that we convey this and teach this to others. Although it may seem as if it is a given, it may seem as if this is well known to many individuals and to many people. Unfortunately, this is not the case. فَالدُّعَاءَ عِبَادَةً بَلْ أَعْظَمُهَا So dua, it is ibadah. Rather, it is the greatest form of ibadah. فَمَنْ دَعَى غَيْرَ اللَّهِ وَالطَّلَبَ الْمَدِّ وَالْعَوْنِ مِنْ غَيْرِهِ وَلَجَأَ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ وَاسْتِغَاثَ بِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ فَقَدْ وَقَعَ فِي الشِّرْكِ الْأَكْبَرِ النَّاقِلْ مِنَ الْمِلَّةِ So whoever they seek help, they seek for help and assistance, they turn to in seeking refuge, whoever seeks help and assistance with other than Allah, whoever turns to and seek refuge in other than Allah, Whoever seeks help in time of peril with other than Allah, then verily they will have fallen into shirk al-akbar. They will have fallen into major shirk. The major shirk which will remove a person from the deen, which will remove a person from Islam. Naam. 
Major shirk, it takes a person out of Islam. It makes a Muslim a kafir, no longer a Muslim. Naam. So this is beyond the shadow of a doubt, an affair that is tremendously dangerous. Naam. And it's tremendously important that we know it. Why? Due to its great danger. Due to the high level of its danger, then it's important that we know about it so that we're able to avoid it and to stay away from it. وَقَالَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ The Prophet صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ He said, إِذَا سَأَلْتَ فَاسْأَلِ اللَّهُ وَإِذَا اسْتَعَنْتَ فَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهُ وَاعْلَمْ أَنَّ الْأُمَّةَ لَوْ اجْتَمَعَتْ عَلَى أَنْ يَنْفَعُوكَ بِالشَّيْءِ لَمْ يَنْفَعُوكَ إِلَّا بِالشَّيْءِ قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ لَكْ نعم, The Prophet ﷺ, he said that, as it comes in his famous hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, if you ask, ask Allah. And if you seek for help and assistance, then seek the help and assistance from Allah. And know that if all of the nation were to come together in order to benefit you with something, they will not be able to benefit you except with that which Allah has already written for you. Naam, except for that which Allah has already written for you. Because everything is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if Allah ta'ala, if he gives you, then no one can take it. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prevents something from you, no one can give it to you. Naam. So when one looks from at these textual proofs which show that dua, supplicating to Allah is worship and the greatest form of worship is to call upon Allah, to ask Allah, Naam, then this is enough to us to establish that this is our route. This is what we are to do. We are to call upon Allah. We are to ask Allah. We are to supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because this is what the textual proofs it point us to. Naam. So textually, we have from the proofs, those which were aforementioned, that which shows us that we our supplication has to be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. Right. Now from the intellectual proofs, Naam, for the intellectual proofs, so you see while yani, it just... Uh, opposite doesn't make sense is that what is that everything is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who ala kulli shayin qadir he is over all things most capable that la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah there is no power and no might except with Allah that ma sha Allah kan wa ma lam yasha lam yakun that whatever Allah wills is and whatever he does not will then it will not be Naam, when one looks at it from that standpoint, then what sense would it make to ask somebody else? What sense would it make to call upon someone else? What sense would it make to seek refuge in someone else? When that individual from the creation or that thing from the creation is impoverished, it has no power, it has no might. That thing is impoverished. It can't bring benefit to itself, let alone bring benefit to others. If Allah Ta'ala has Yani block the benefit from them. It cannot prevent harm from themselves, nor prevent harm from others. If Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has written that harm is going to reach them. So when you look at it from the standpoint, not only is it a, yani a complete waste of your time to call upon other than Allah, it's a complete recipe for your destruction. To call upon other than Allah is a complete recipe for your ultimate destruction because it is shirk al akbar. The type of shirk that will make all of your deeds null and void. All of your deeds go away. They're gone. Naam. It is the type of shirk that will make a person exit and leave Islam. They're no longer a Muslim. It's the type of shirk that if you meet Allah in that state with that shirk, Allah does not forgive major shirk. Allah does not forgive major shirk for the one who dies upon it and they meet him with it. The one who dies upon major shirk, and they meet Allah with it, Allah does not forgive the major shirk. And this is what we had taken in the last class, what we had went over, naam, in the last class. With Dalil, just as a quick reminder, with Dalil, as a quick reminder, is Allah Ta'ala, He says, That verily Allah does not forgive that partners are associated with Him in worship, but He forgives from other than that to whom he pleases. He forgives other than that to whom he pleases. And this is for meaning that what? The one who dies upon shirk. The one who dies upon major shirk. And they meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will not be forgiven. The one who 
meets Allah with major shirk, they will not be forgiven and they will not enter into Jannah. Jannah will be made haram for them. With Dalil, Qawluhu Ta'ala, and the proof is Allah Ta'ala's statement, إِنَّهُ مَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ وَمَأْوَاهُ النَّارِ وَمَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ مِنْ أَنصَارِ And whoever makes shirk, whoever associates partners with Allah in worship, then verily Allah will make Jannah, will make heaven haram for them. Heaven will become haram for them. Prohibited, not for them, they can't go. وَمَأْوَاهُ النَّارِ and his abode will be the hellfire. And you will not find for the criminals any helper. And you will not find for the criminals any helper. Ma'am. So now when we look at this, that a person who falls into this major shirk, their deeds are gone, they leave Islam, they won't be forgiven, Jannah's haram, and they have to go to hell forever. Ma'am, when we look, when we see all these things, we realize this is extremely dangerous. This is extremely dangerous. Ma'am. So now, is there any way, shape or form, that something of this nature could be from Islam and from that which the Prophet ﷺ taught us to do? Could that we even be conceivable? And of course the answer is no. Because Islam is the way to go to Jannah. is the way to escape the fire. This within itself is the way to yani making shirk al-akbar, calling upon others in Allah. This is the way to go to Jahannam. This is the way to make the Jannah haram for you. Naam, this is the way to make the Jannah haram for you. This is the way to, to, to yani for a person to leave Islam. This is the way for a person not to be forgiven. So on and so forth. Naam, so with that being the case, how dangerous is this? It is incumbent that we know what Islam is. So by default, we will know what it is not. And it is incumbent that we know what Islam is based upon the proofs and the evidences. Based upon the book and the sunnah. Not based upon people's traditions. Not based upon yani, what is done in this country or that country. Not based upon what we found our forefathers doing. Not based upon what we hear people saying. No. No. Because what? Because our forefathers, what the people are saying, the, our countrymen, so on and so forth. They do not define what is Islam. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us what is Islam inside of the book and inside of the sunnah. The way of the salaf, what they were upon, that's Islam. Not what this one says or that one says or this one thinks or the conjecture from whoever. No. Islam is what Allah has taught us in the Quran, in the sunnah, and that what you find the sahaba were upon. That's Islam. And this is important. Why? Because we live in a time, unfortunately... Where you have people that give a false impression of what is Islam. People who say things like, and the extremists, those who are extreme, they don't allow shrines. Those who are extreme, they do not allow shrines. You know shrines? Yeah, I mean, people, they dead, they make a shrine for them. People go and they make dua to them and they ask them for things and yeah, they seek uh, refuge in them and so on and so forth. They're saying that the extremists don't allow this. Yeah, subhanallah, the extremists don't allow this? What version of Islam allows that? These ayat are clear. These ahadith are clear. So a person coming and say their, their version of Islam. What do you mean their version of Islam? Are there many versions of Islam? Huh? Are there many versions of Islam? No. There's only one Islam. Naam, because the truth is one. There's only one light. Because the light is one. Darknesses, volumats, many. Falsehood, many. But the truth, the truth is one. Naam. So what are these people saying in their version of Islam, the extremist version of Islam, don't allow shrines? No, because shrines are not allowed in what? In Islam. Shrines are not allowed in Islam. Why? Because to make dua to other than Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this is shirk. This is what will take you out of Islam. This is what will make you no longer a Muslim. This is what will make you not be forgiven when you meet your Lord. This is what will make the Jannah haram for you and make the fire your place forever. So now you tell me. Huh? So it is incumbent that we know what Islam is and that we know that it's not defined by the people, but rather Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the one who has sent down the true deen. He is the one who has taught us what is Islam? He is the one who has guided us to that which is correct. And this is why I always remind myself by saying, Alhamdulillah ala ni'matil islami wa sunnah. All praise and thanks belong to Allah for guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the sunnah. Now, the Shaykh he goes on and he mentions the Shaykh Abdul Razak 
he mentions, he says, and the evil imams, the evil ulama, نعم? this is what is meant, imma here, the evil ulama, the evil scholars, huh? the evil scholars, الذين خافهم النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام على أمته the ones who the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he was scared for them for his ummah he feared for his ummah evil scholars he feared for his ummah evil scholars why? because people look at scholars and they take them as an example they take them as a religious authority that what they're saying is correct and you know so on and so forth and they listen to them now, if if they're evil, if they're imma to balal, if they if they yeah, the scholars who are upon misguidance, and so on and so forth, then they're gonna do what? They're gonna misguide the people. They're going to misguide the people. So the Prophet sallallahu he was scared. He was scared uh, for these individuals. Yeah, uh, yeah, for he was scared for his ummah, uh, the likes of these like like the likes of these individuals. But these evil scholars, these scholars who are astray. لا ي... لا لا يزالون لا يزالون إلى إلى الآن يحث الناس على دعاء على دعاء الأموات واستغاثة بهم واستنجاد نعم واستنجاد بهم they still these evil scholars up until even right now they still encourage people to make dua to the dead and to seek help in times of peril from the dead and to seek status and nobility and the like and benefit from the dead وَيُقُولُونَ لَهُمْ and they say unto them هَذَا يُسَمَّى تَوَصُّلْ they say this is what is تَوَصُّلْ this is what is تَوَصُّلْ نعم وَيُسَمَّى شَفَاعَةً and they say this is intercession this is intercession. Naam. Wa yuwarrituna al-awam tawritan azima. And they plunge the common people into a tremendously devastating destruction. They plunge the common people and involve them in a tremendously devastating destruction. This is the reality. Because what they're calling the people to do it's to make major shirk. What they're calling the people to do is to do that which will take them outside of Islam if the proofs and evidence are established against them and they remain upon it. What they are calling them to do, they call them to do that, that if they die upon it and they meet their Lord, they're in serious trouble. And they're telling them that this is something that is virtuous, that this is something that is good, that this is something that... Allahu Musta'an. Allah Musta'an. This is something that, that, that is from Islam. Something they are encouraged to do. This is how you be a good Muslim. You call upon the dead. Huh? You call upon the righteous ones who are dead and so on and so forth. A'udhu Billah. These people are shayateen. Bila shak wa bila raib. Naam. The Shaykh he mentions, he says, Hatta inna ahad al-awam. The Shaykh he brings an a, a incident, a story that had taken place. Because when people, yani, sometimes you may hear this stuff and depending upon if Allah has blessed you to be in such a, a, a such a place where you don't encounter the likes of this foolishness and likes of this absurdity, then you almost will like maybe not believe. Like really people are that foolish that they would do something like this? People are really that foolish? Yeah, subhanAllah. I just want to, before I get into the Sheikh story, let me just ask you this. When we see the Catholics, for example, and they popes, they die, and they're saints, you know, righteous men, and so on and so forth. And they pray to these saints, right? And they and they and they pray to them, patron saint of so and so. And they may have a necklace, and they got this figurine character on a necklace. And when they want whatever that guy is the patron saint of, whatever false deity, they pray to him. Now they pray to him, okay? And they make these shrines and they go there and they pray to these people dead in these shrines. And they're Catholics, Christians, that's what they're doing. My question to you is, what's the difference? What's the difference between that and between that Sufi that goes to the grave of his yani, yani wali from the awliya, his saint from the saints, quote unquote, and they pray to them and they make dua to them and they, and they put yani, all kind of, you know, whatever. Uh, around the altar and, 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 and make it beautiful and they make you know 
decorate the shrine and all this type of stuff. What's what's the difference? What's the difference? Outside of this one is praying to this guy and this one is praying to another guy. But in essence, what, what, what's the difference? Huh? What's the difference? When it comes down to what they're doing, what's the difference? When it comes to the outward appearance of what they're doing, what's the difference? When it comes to the inward of what they're doing by giving yeah, any, any bad to other than Allah, what is the difference? There is no difference. There is no difference. There is no difference. So how in the world could a Muslim believe that going to the, sh the, the shrine of Wali so-and-so and writing him a note and asking him for stuff and making dua to him and raising your hands, making dua to Wali so-and-so, that this is okay, but then censor the Catholics for what they do when they call upon Saint so-and-so and say such and such. What's the difference? Do you understand? SubhanAllah. The way that the shaitan has tricked the people is tremendous. It's sad. It's sad. It really it is. It's sad and it's very pitiful that people will find themselves falling into this trick of shaitan that yani, is so obvious, is so blatant, is so apparent. Like he didn't even try to hide the trick. He didn't even try to hide the trick. There's not even a rebranding of it or yani, uh, changing up the marketing of it. It's the same thing. They call them saints, saints, praying to the saint, this one praying to the saint. It's the same thing. Same difference. And yet the people are falling into it. People who have the book, who have the sunnah, you're going to fall into that? That it only comes as a result of ignorance and only comes as a result to the evil scholars, to the scholars of deviation and misguidance. That's where it comes from. And we're going to see that from here. Listen, the sheikh, he says, Hatta, like, like I said, the person would think like it's so clear this, this can't really happen in real life, right? No, unfortunately it does. The sheikh, he mentioned, he says, Hatta, he said, even one time, the Shaykh is saying, he's saying, one time, Sheikh Abdul Razak, he says, one time, I heard one of the common people, I heard one of the common people making dua to other than Allah. Naam? Making dua to other than Allah. This was just an everyday Muslim. Naam? He said, I heard him, he was making dua to other than Allah. He said, so I gave him advice. I gave him some advice. Naam. Wa akhattu aqra alayhi ayat. He said, and I, I took him, right? And and this is how the way the Muslims should be with each other. You see somebody falling into something that's this grievous, you have to you have to you have to you know, uh, uh, teach them in a in an easy way, in a good way, have concern for them. So the Shaykh he had concern because this kind of stuff break your heart. This kind of stuff break your heart to see your brother upon something like this, to see to see the fellow Muslims upon something like this, it's hurtful. It hurts you. Break the heart. Naam. So the Shaykh, he took him. He gave him advice. He took him. He, he brought him close to him. He took him. Naam. And he read and he read upon him or he recited to him some verses. Some verses. Some verses that highlight the fact that supplication is worship. لا يجوز أن يصرف لغير الله And it's not permissible to give it to other than Allah. Naam. So he brought some of these ayat. To show this individual, perhaps maybe he never, yeah, he, you know, maybe he forgot, never took notice, so on and so forth. Now, because we don't know people's situations, so never take it for granted that a person is doing something blatantly wrong and they know it's wrong and they don't care it's wrong. Never, never believe that. Never believe that because it's quite possible that they're doing something that is wrong and they don't realize it. It's quite possible they're doing something that is incorrect. And they they have no knowledge that is incorrect. So we have to be kind and gentle with the believers. We have to be kind and gentle with the Muslims, uh, because verily we live in a time of great ignorance. So don't so never take nothing for granted and say no. He know he just obstinate. No 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 no. Never do that. Never do that. Naam. So the Sheikh he started to recite to him certain ayat. For example, the statement of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Woman adallu. من من يدعو من دون الله ما لا يستجيب له إلى يوم القيامة وهم عن دعائهم غافلون. الله تعالى he says what means and who is more astray and who is more astray than those who in call upon they invoke they supplicate to other than Allah those things that will not answer them. Until the day of resurrection. 
and those things that are they themselves unaware that people are calling upon them and making supplication to them. Now, these things they won't answer to Yom Al Qiyamah because then they will be informed. These people, yeah, I need make sure to you. These people was calling upon you. So they're calling upon individuals that's not going to respond to them until the day of judgment. And when they respond to them on the day of judgment, they're going to free themselves from that shirk that the people was making with them. They're going to free themselves from that. And I ain't got nothing to do with that. That's going to be their response. I have nothing to do with that. That's on them, not on me. I have nothing to do with that. I want I want no parts of that. You understand? That's going to be the nature of their of their answer on the day of judgment. But the reality of it is, is that وَهُمْ عَنْ دُعَائِهِمْ غَافِلُونَ They are unaware people's making dua to them. Why? Because they're in their graves. They can't hear. They're in their graves. They don't hear what you're saying. They're in their graves. They don't know what you're doing. They're in their graves. They can't see you there. You, do you understand? Wait, this is one ayah. This can be found in Surah Ahqaf. And it's verse number 5. Naam, Surah Ahqaf and it's verse number 5. Inshallah Ta'ala, I want everyone to write these ayat down, the references, I need the proofs, to show that dua, it is ibadah, and you cannot call upon anything except Allah. It's not permissible to call upon other than Allah. Also, وَمِثْلُ قَوْلِهِ Ta'ala, And also, like Allah Ta'ala's statement, وَالَّذِينَ تَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِهِ مَا يَمْلِكُونَ مِنْ قِطْمِيرِ إِنْ تَدْعُوهُمْ لَا يَسْمَعُوا دُعَاءَكُمْ وَلَوْ سَمِعُوا مَا اسْتَجَابُوا لَكُمْ وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يَكْفُرُونَ بِشِرْكِكُمْ وَلَا يُنَبِّئُكَ وَلَا يُنَبِّئُكَ مِثْلُ الْخَبِيرِ Allah Ta'ala, he says what translated means And those who call upon Others instead of Allah. Those who call upon others instead of Allah. Those who don't even own Qitmir. Those who they don't even own a Qitmir. You know Qitmir? Do you know the date stone? Right? The date seed? It's called the date stone. Do you know that little thin membrane that, that's around it? Huh? That little little skin thing that's around the uh the date stone, right? The kind that you know people don't see a lot of value in. You, you understand? That, that that little that little skin around the uh the the the, the date stone or the seed of the date that's qitmir that's what qitmir is so these individuals they don't even own that they don't own that right which is to say what because they don't own anything now they don't own anything everything belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala including these individuals but so these people who they calling upon other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now I'm Allah ta'ala he says well ladina tad'una min dunihi مَا يَمْلِكُونَ مِنْ قِطْمِيرِ And those who they call upon other than him, they don't even own the قِطْمِيرِ They don't even own the little skin around the date seed. إِنْ تَدْعُوهُمْ If you call upon them, لَا يَسْمَعُوا دُعَاءَكُمْ If you call upon them, if they are called upon, they don't even hear the dua. They don't hear the supplication. وَلَوْ سَمِعُوا مَا اسْتَجَابُوا لَكُمْ And even if they heard it, they won't answer you. Now, why? Because they're incapable. They can't. They're incapable. They can't. Now, because they're dead or there's some inanimate object. You understand? I'm saying huh? it can't it can't do anything for you. But right. <clears throat> and on a day of judgment, those those individuals who they used to call upon on a day of judgment, they're gonna disavow themselves from the people's shirk. They're gonna disavow themselves. Yakfuruna bi shirkikum. They're gonna dis disavow themselves. They don't want nothing to do with that. No, no, that's on y'all. Get that away from me. I want nothing to do with it. Naam. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says something which should stop everybody in their tracks. Allah ta'ala, he says, وَلَا يُنَبِّئُكَ مِثْلُ الْخَبِيرِ And no one is going to inform you like the one who knows everything. No one is going to inform you like the one who is all aware. Naam. Showing again that what? That calling upon others, supplicating to other things other than Allah is not permissible. And, this, and, and these ayat can be found in Surah uh, Fatir. Naam, Surah Fatir, verse 13 and 14. Naam, once you get these down, all of these are proofs and evidences. When people come and say things like, oh, and they have an extreme version of Islam that don't allow shrines, don't allow calling upon the dead. Yes, because that's Islam. There ain't no extreme version. That's Islam, and Islam is the middle course. Ala kulli hal. Wa mithl qawlihi ta'ala. Naam, and also, 
ta'ala, like Allah Ta'ala's statement. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says what, what translated means. <coughs> so say, so you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you say to those, you say to those besides him. Who they pretend to be gods. You say to those besides them who they think and they consider them naam, foolishly to be gods, they neither have the power to remove adversity from you nor to shift it away from you to another person. Naam. These individuals they don't have the power to remove the the, 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 the harm yani, from you. Nor do they have the power to avert it from you so it goes somewhere else. They are totally and completely impoverished. They can't do anything. And likewise, like Allah Ta'ala's statement, Allah Ta'ala He says what translated means And you say O Muhammad to those polytheists Those people of shirk Those whom they call upon And those who they assert To be deities we know they are false deities. Naam. And those who they assert to be deities and those who they call upon other than Allah. That these things don't even possess the weight of an atom. They don't even possess the weight of a very, very small, tiny little particle. Naam. Neither in the heavens nor in the earth. Neither in the heavens nor in the earth. Nor do they have any share of anything anyway. Nor do they have any share of it. Nor are they any type and form of supporters other than yani, nor nor are they any type of supporters. Naam. They are not supporters for them. They are in, incapable of helping them. They are impoverished. They cannot aid or assist them in anything. Naam. But people call upon subhanAllah the likes of these things. This is a travesty. These ayat can be found or this ayat can be found in Surah Sabah. In his verse 22. Can be found in Surah Seba. In his verse 22. The Shaykh goes on and he says. And I also read. Yani, upon him a hadith. In this topic. He said. And then when I stopped. He said when I stopped. And the man understood the affair good. The man had a good grasp. An awareness or understanding of the issue. He said that when I stopped and he understood good this affair, uh, and it became clear to him, he said to me, He said, I'm from such and such a country, uh, but he named the country to the Sheikh, yeah, but it's, but it's not you know, the purpose here to, to, to name that. So the Sheikh he says, so he said, I'm from you know such and such a country. Damn. He said, I'm from such and such a place, such and such a country, and no one has ever said the like of this speech to me. Huh? Meaning he said, I'm from I'm from a such and such country, and I've never heard the like of this speech before. I never heard this before. No one ever said this before. Now, what is he talking about? No one ever said this. Meaning from what? From his family, from yani, the, the common, you know, uh, Muslim on the street? No, no, no. He means what? From the ulama of his country. From the quote-unquote scholars of his country. Now, from the evil scholars of his country. They never mentioned that to him. They never re recited these ayat to him. They never yani, uh, 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 recited these ahadith to him. Never, ever. He never heard this before. Subhanallah. The Shaykh, he says, hey, and the ulama, 
كانوا يقولون. He said because the ulama his country they used to say what? هذا توصل. They say this is توصل. نعم. وأشعروه أن هذا المد لل لل يدين والدعاء لغير الله من الأنبياء أو أولياء أو غير ذلك إنما هو توصل. And they made this man feel. Not only they didn't tell him, but they will say to him, in fact, this stuff is tawassul. And it made him feel that when he raises his hands to make dua to other than Allah, whether it be from a prophet or from a, uh, a righteous person, yeah, or whether it be from other than that, whether it's from a prophet or a wali, from the awliya, any righteous one, so on and so forth, or other than that, they taught him this is tawassul. That's what they taught him. This is tawassul. This is from the deen. This is tawassul. Subhanallah. Walam. Walam yusba'uhu ayat al tawheed. And they never let him hear. They never recite it to him. They never let him hear the ayat al tawheed. Well, ayat ikhlas. Al dua lillah. Nor those ayat which point that the dua is sincere, has to be sincere for Allah and to Allah alone. They never recited these verses to him. They never recited these ahadith to him. Naam. And it shows you. As the Shaykh he mentions, he says, وَهَذَا مِمَّا يُبَيِّنُ لَنَا مَا سَبَقَ خَطُورَةَ الْأَئِمَّةِ الضَّلَالِ عَلَى النَّاسِ He said, and this is highlights, further highlights what we aforementioned before, the danger of the misguided scholars upon the people. The danger of the misguided scholars upon the people. نعم. And بِلَا شَكُّ بِلَا رَيْبِ We live in a time where there are many individuals who, uh, Allah al-Musta'an, are misguided from the Muslims, calling to all types of craziness, and then of course you always have the constant of the kuffar who try to bring a bad image to what is Islam and they try to and you know, they bring propaganda and so on and so forth and they try to beat the Muslims down and water them down until they dilute all of their religion away from them. Now, so we, this is always you know, a constant kuffar, they always be doing stuff like that. But what makes matters even worse is that now we got to worry about this coming from the direction of the kuffar and then we got to worry about this coming from the direction of people who claim Islam. Yeah, and, and this is a tremendously dangerous situation. So it is incumbent, it is important that we know in full depth and in detail, with certainty, with true knowledge, with firm and sound knowledge, um, what is Islam, so that when we hear the likes of these propaganda and we hear the likes of these yeah, any, uh, 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 false interpretations and, and this misguidance that they try to wrap and beautify with their speech, um, that we know that this is incorrect, it is not from the deen, but rather it is that which will lead to our destruction. And what is the proof? The proof is all of these ayat in the Quran. These hadith that show us that dua, it is ibadah and it belongs to Allah. And to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And then the Shaykh Hafizullah ta'ala, he gets into yani, um, one more. Or he gets into, excuse me, some more um, examples. He gets into some more examples. Of what enters into major shirk so that the reader could be aware, the one who is studying this book could be aware of some examples of the major shirk so they know what to stay away from. But in Bithnilahi Ta'ala, we will save those to the next class before going into, before going on, I should say, and continuing, which deals getting into the minor shirk before going on, getting into the next section, which deals with the minor shirk. Now, We'll save all of that into the next class, into the next time. Bithni lahi ta'ala. Fa naktafi bihad al qadr. Assalamu alaikum ala nabiyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wa jazakumullahu khayra.